Okay, so it says that we're live. I don't okay. know. If yeah, okay. Back yeah, we're live. It says we're live on my part, too. So I'm just going to get my timer. Okay. It's ready. not It's not switching back automatically for mine. So I'll just switch them. I think it will work. So if you okay. want to just go ahead and go. Okay, it's not switching on my end either. I just see myself and then I see you. Okay, that's fine. I think I can switch them back and forth on the recording here. Okay. So. Alrighty. So, hi, my name is Caitlin Jones. Um, our debate topic today is which would cause the greatest infestation slash losses, either the cattle grub or the screw worm fly. And you can go. So, my name is Paige, and my insect that I'm doing is the co Coachula... Cochlema hama nevorax, and it's the screw worm fly. I know I really just butchered that scientific name. <laughs> so you can go ahead. Okay, so my scientific name is the Hypoderma linatum, and once again, the common name is the cattle grub. So I'm going to go ahead and start the opening statement. So I'm going to start my timer for two minutes. Alrighty, so the cattle grub um, causes swelling underneath the skin of um, livestock, so cattle, horses. And there are two different types of species of cattle grubs that affect the northern hemisphere. The first is the hypoderma linatum, which is the cattle, the most common cattle grub. And then the second is the hypoderma bovis cattle grub. Um, the adult cattle grubs are also referred to as warble flies. So as an adult, they start, um, they're, fly, they're flies and they're hairy, which is, they don't have any functional mouth parts, and they re reproduce solely on energy, de deprived from stored reserves. Um, the eggs are fixed to the hairs of the host, and then the larvae hatch four to seven days, and then they crawl down into the hair, which they then penetrate, penetrate into the skin, which causes a large amount of ir irritation. The pupa... Um, in the spring, they mature and the they end up falling on the ground and they penetrate into the soil. Um, the behavior, let's see how much time do I have. The eggs are found on most of the um, animals' horse, like cow legs or underneath the stomachs or back on their uh, backs as to which then like they would they create a big hole and they're actually pretty thick and they just warble themselves down into this um skin of the cattle. Um, let's see what else. I think that they're most dangerous to the livestock because they cause a considerable amount of damage to their skin, which then causes um, decrease economically with ha cow hide meat because the warble or the cattle grubs make them sick and they don't want to eat or produce a lot of milk, which then produces the um, amount of meat and the amount of money that the farmers and cattle ranches can make. Um, let's see. And there's that's my timer, so I'll let you go. Okay. I'm hoping that me clicking is making the video go back and forth because it's not switching automatically. Um, so I'm going to start my timer. Okay, so I'm Paige again, and I'm doing the screw worm fly. And... Um, so the screw worm flies are parasitic flies, and basically they go and any animal that's been wounded, whether it's like scraped its leg on like a barbed wire fence or any like open wound in the flesh, um, the screw worm flies go and lay their eggs in the flesh, in the wound, and the larvae actually feed on that flesh until they are ready to turn into pupae and hatch. And so it can be very like damaging to any type of livestock and animal. They it's mostly happens to warm-blooded animals, but it's um, so mostly cattle. But it doesn't like limit to like things like domestic pets. Um, the life history is the egg is laid in the wound, the eggs hatch, and then they feed on the wound for a while and their larvae for about a week, and then they turn into pupae, and they. Um, morph into the fly and they emerge as an adult and their lifespan is about three weeks total and then they can begin egg laying again um, at six days into their adult life. Um, 
they their behavior is they screw they feed on the open wounds obviously of the warm blooded animals, and then they turn into pupae by when the larvae um, feel that it's time to morph. Basically, they drop into and burrow into the soil and enter the pupal stage, and that lasts about a week again. And then adult flies emerge from the soil, and then they live their adult life out. They're extremely harmful to livestock. And basically, they because they eat at the open flesh, they cause a lot of infection, which can taint the meat of like animals that are sent to be for slaughterhouses for food, and then like cows and everything. They can harm like the hide and make them very sick from the infections that can come from all the germs that they carry. And it's just unique because they are like live a a life of that depends on other warm-blooded animals, and that's kind of a unique characteristic to them. And that's my two minutes. Okay, so, alrighty. So we're going to start the first rebuttal. And so my first question is, um, uh, what is the treatment process for animals that are infested with the screwworm flies? So you'll have one minute. Okay. Um, starting my minute right now. So um, the treatment process is basically the larvae have to be removed by hand. You have to use tweezers and you have to go in the wound of the animal and find them and pick them all out and like dispose of them and make sure they're killed. And then you treat them with an antibiotic and um, like different approved chemicals that are like insecticides. Um, and you should do this for a couple days, two to three days, like consecutively to make sure that they don't come back or that you didn't miss any and you kill off the last of them because they are called screw worms because they screw deeper into the flesh whenever they get disturbed. Um, and then you should keep um, putting different um, insecticides and organ phosphate insecticides on them for up to seven to 10 days to prevent the return to the wound so that the wound can properly heal. And that's my minute. Um, so then my question for you is what kind of treatments are used to relieve the swelling from cattle grubs and is there any way to prevent the cattle grub from penetrating it into the livestock skin? Um, okay, so the only way that like I know to um, reduce the swelling is you can actually take the larvae when they're adults it's better if they're bigger and you they can be squeezed out of the warble swelling so like that hole that they buried themselves into i didn't start my timer sorry okay. um they can actually be squeezed out of there um so the only way that i know of to prevent the um cattle grubs from occurring um they can actually be vaccinated and um, the vaccination are used to help with the infestation of the cattle grub. Um, let's see. You also asked, is there any way to prevent the cattle grub from swelling, right? Is that what you asked? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's no way to help pre prevent the cattle grub like from swelling like because that's what it's meant to do like once they um, bury themselves into the skin it causes that irritation and almost makes like a bubble type thing mm -hmm. on their back or wherever it's located but um anyways i just think they're dangerous yeah oh. okay sorry that's okay. my minute um i also my next question for you is what has made screwworm flies so difficult to eradicate okay uh, let me start my timer. Okay, so basically screwworm flies are like a global issue. They, I found that they really like tropical and subtropical regions, which makes sense because they um, feed on warm-blooded animals, so they're attracted to the heat. Um, and it's hard because a female can, like, um, screwworm fly can lay up to like 3,000 eggs in her lifetime, and an average lifetime for these things is about three weeks. So that's a lot. So it's just hard to get um, really a handle on all of the numbers of them. And then it's hard because whenever larvae, whenever the eggs are like laid and the larvae basically like hatch, they, if they're disturbed at all, 
they're obviously called screw worms because they screw deeper and deeper into the flesh. So it's hard to really like know if you got all of them because you don't know how many were there initially in the first place. And so that can be like, it can still, you think that you have them all and then the animal still has issues later on. And so because there's just so many of them, it's hard to keep up with all of it and really prevent it. Um, and that's my minute. Okay. So very next. good answer. Um, so next is our closing statements. So we each have a minute to say like, to, to summarize our points and finalize like our argument as to which um, is the uh, worst bug, I guess. So I'll go first. I'm gonna start my minutes. Okay. Okay, so um, like I said, they're very dangerous to not only just cattle, but they have also, um, they also affect our economy. Like we need meat, we need milk. If those uh, cattle grubs invest into the cattle, they actually make them sick. They don't want to eat and they don't want to um, graze on grass or anything like that. They, they become very ill. Um, to, they affect human society because the cattle grubs have actually been found on humans before, which is very dangerous and very sickly to if it's sickly to an animal, it's also very sickly to a human being. Um, I think that they're most damaging to cattle and livestock because um, they're, like I said, get very sick from meat and then cows need to reproduce or make milk. Oh, there's my minutes. Okay. Anyways, go ahead. Okay, well, for my closing statement, um, so I think that the screw worm flies are obviously extremely harmful because they feed on an animal that's already injured, um, and they are causing infection in an open wound that's already like very, very dangerous. Um, I didn't start my timer, so I'm going to go do that now. Um, and so um, it's, which is also very detrimental for similar reasons because we need, obviously we need meat, we need milk we need these cattles for different resources that are very like detrimental to human society and everything and so if this infestation becomes bigger and bigger it's going to keep causing more issues which is going to affect the economy because there will be less cows and other animals because they affect sheep and then it's hard because there have been cases where they have been found in humans which is very scary and not it's very um it can be lead to very, very bad infections because human immune systems don't know how to really prevent them and fight that off either. So I think that it's the screwworms are very dangerous. And that's my minute. So um, I think we're done. Bye. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Bye guys. Bye.